Welcome to the 750th national event for Pro Stock, where Alan Johnson's 35th career poll has earned him the bye. Vincent Nobile, Dave Conley, that's a great matchup of young Lions. It's all about the countdown of the championship and that battle between Jonathan Gray and Greg Anderson. Jonathan's going to have to get around Chris McGahey in his first round matchup. And it does begin with those two young Lions I referred to a moment ago. Dave Conley, third in the power rankings, has clinched a spot up against Vincent Nobile. Fair Chevrolet Camaros head to head, start off Pro Stock. does so with Dave Conley holding a couple hundredths of a second on the reaction timer. He's going to stretch it out with a elapsed time that goes 6.560 six seconds. Greg, you've said it multiple times this weekend. It's as simple as the fact that you just have to win this weekend. How do you do that today? First, you beat the guy that you raced first round. You can't even look past that. I run a tough competitor here at Derek Kramer. It's a tough old dodge over there. The Chevy needs to get up and needs to run. I need to do my job driving. I need to get the wind light. And then we'll think about the next one and then hopefully do the same thing. And then the next one, next one. You cannot win a race if you don't win first round. So all my emphasis right now is on first round. One round at a time. Not only is it just win, he doesn't care how, just get it done. We know the thing's got the horsepower under the hood, but are they going to be able to get the win over Jonathan? They've got a new car coming and calling the shots right now is Brian Self, a man they call Lump. He's been around this sport a long, long time. They think they can forge their own way moving forward here. I'd like to move around Jonathan Gray. Ninth and tenth in the points. Chris sits there, but he's got a pretty good cushion over Jonathan. Greg, of course, watching this pair right now. Jonathan left first as he does many times, and he's going to get to the finish line first. Six, 57, 8. McGahey will bow out in round one today. That marks the 15th time in 19 races, head-to-head -head action, but Jonathan has left first. At almost 100 for the second, off the advantage off the starting line for Jonathan. It's just a little more pressure on Greg Anderson, but Greg, he's not worried about it. He's won championships. He knows how to do it, but right here, you're going to see the margin of victory at the finish line as Jonathan Gray not only had the advantage off the starting line, had a better car on the racetrack and gets a win by about half a car length. Well, B. Gaines started this season with back-to-back runner-ups, led the points, but has since slipped down to the number eight position, but says this team has made some big gains in the suspension area of this race car with regards to shocks. Problem started when he brought out this new car, the Dodge Dart. They had a problem with the four-link suspension rubbing. They fixed that, but it took them a while to get it figured out. Now it's been making some pretty consistent runs. Gaines versus Matt Hartford. Running that Roy Johnson. Mopar horsepower under the hood, a close race. Give it to V Gaines by nine thousandths of a second. Drove around him. 658-1. Sniffing a photo finish, Mike. Yeah, three hundredths of a second advantage Matt Hartford had off the starting line, but V Gaines was able to run him down. You take a look at that margin right at the stripe just by a nose. V Gaines advances to the second round. Good race. Lucas Oil photo finish cam shows us that margin of victory. Bob Vandegrift's car has finally made it back to the pit where they'll take it apart to survey the damage. But I can tell you this is what happened. The rear end broke. That meant there was no load on the motor. So it over revved. And when that happens, I mean, all heck breaks loose inside of the engine. We still don't know what all was damaged inside as they just got it back in or taking it apart. Uh, but uh, we'll try and find out. But this crew is very, very dejected right now. When I talked to Greg Anderson earlier this weekend, he told me, quote, if I cannot win races, I probably won't make the countdown. Don't deserve to. He will race Derek Kramer. You heard him talk about that tricky driver in the opposite lane. Derek looking for his first round win. And, you know, Greg does not want to be the end of that trivia question. Well, and Greg doesn't take anybody lightly. I mean, he and he does it the right way. He races the racetrack and he races a tree. Get the best reaction time and make the best run on the racetrack and let the numbers decide. What's at stake for Greg Anderson if he doesn't make the top 10? Yeah, it'll be the first time in 12 years he doesn't finish inside the top 10. You see John at the top of that list. John Forrest with 30 consecutive years there. Wow. Red light. Kramer hands it to Greg Anderson. Now the important part, the elapsed time slip shows 6.556 and through four pair of cars, that's the quickest pass we've seen in eliminations thus far. Rick. 
Beautiful day here at Pacific Raceways. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Northwest Nationals race 16 of 24 on the NHRA Meliello Drag Racing Series calendars. Jason Line, number one ranked in the power rankings, clinched into the championship, comes up against Mark Wolf. Second race of the season for the Washington State native. And a task too tough to challenge. Jason Line, A to B, 6.555 seconds. That's one thou better than his teammate. Think those cars are team cars? Greg Anderson, he said you wanted to do winner's interviews. By golly, we're doing a winner's interview. How good does that feel? Thank you, Gary. Feels great. Absolutely. Every round I win anymore feels like winning a race, but I need four wins in a row. That's what I really want, and I can't get past there if I don't win second round. So that's what comes up next. We're going to dig deep for that one. This Summit Chevy has definitely got more performance this weekend than it's had in a long time. I need to make good use of it. I got a good horse. Now I need to ride it to the winner's circle. Thank you. In fact, Greg's number in the elapsed timer there exactly to the foul what he qualified with. Alan Johnson comes up now on a single. Stat guy. First time we came to this part of the country, the National Hot Rod Association, 1975. There was only 15 pro stock cars. Back then, the one and only Bob Glidden, of all people, had a single. He ran in the eight-second zone. He was driving, this is the best part, a Ford Pinto. A, a Pinto? Wow. That just doesn't seem right. Bob Glidden, I might have predicted. The Pinto, yeah. <laughs> I'd have missed that one by a mile. He also had a Fairmont, you know. One of his great cards. He could win with anything. Well, this should be a pretty good test of the racetrack now. As the number one qualifier just goes 6.546 seconds. That's now low elapsed time of round one of eliminations. Not too much wrong. Gary Gerald. Shane Gray now comes up against Travis Mazza. Travis made his pro stock debut in Norwalk starting on the bump spot. Of course, that's a Larry Morgan car that actually Travis owns. It's Morgan horsepower under the hood. So that is Shane Gray horsepower under the hood there. Six, 54, four, and the numbers just keep going down here. Yeah. This could be a problem, though. Look who he races in round two. Got to race his brother, Jonathan, <laughs> in round two. But that low ET of the round thus far, Allen was low ET of every single qualifying session. So Shane Gray stepped it up in the first round. It's the sixth race of the season for Gary Densham and this team. And Gary was just telling me that these guys showed up and performed, in his opinion, just as good as any of the full season tank crews. But they are running a new blower this week. And he said that the equipment they've been running for the last 10 years, it's too antiquated. They can't win with it anymore. So they brought out this new blower. Problem is that changes the whole tune up. So Gary said that they're just trying to get it figured out. He sees his second round matchup against Tim Wilkerson as just another test session. That will bring us now to Jack Coughlin, Larry Morgan, Jack fourth in the points. It's countdown clinched. Larry was in our booth Friday night for ESPN3 show. Always entertaining, <laughs> isn't he? Very entertaining. <laughs> Absolutely. The only problem I have with Larry is he just won't tell it like it is. Uh, really? <laughs> that was sarcasm, Dave. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, but you see right now they had to back Larry up and they're going to move back in to that matchup against Jed Coughlin, Larry's going to have to try to hit the tree against one of the best in the business and see if he can get the win. A couple of guys from Ohio out in Washington for Sunday drive here in round number one pro stock. Oh, Jed, you may be on it today. He left first, he'll hit the strike first. 6.5, 656, 256, 10, 67. Time slip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I guess it felt all right. Uh, just felt real tight everywhere. I don't know if it was heavy on clutch and just kind of pull around. I had the wheel turn pretty much all the way down the racetrack, too, trying to counter steer it. Good information from Jeggy, courtesy of the onboard microphone there. You're right on board with them. The second round of Pro Stock sets up like this as Alan Johnson races Dave Conley, two power rank racers. And then for the 80th time, Jeg Coughlin will race Greg Anderson. The last two times they've raced, though, Jeggy's put Greg on the trailer attack at the last two events. 
Of course, Greg trying to get into the top 10, something Jack Beckman is also successfully doing thus far today as he beat Tommy Johnson Jr. just a few moments ago. Team going back in the pits right now to begin the turnaround process. It's fast Jack Beckman races Alexis DeJorian in round two.